Hi students, today we are going to discuss, you start discussing unit 5, programmable logic devices in which different logic devices which are which can be programmed at field we are going to discuss. Under this category we are going to have logic devices like ROM, PLA, PAL, FPGA which stands for field programmable gate array and complex programmable logic devices. In this the first type of logic device ROM will be discussing now. Now we are going to discuss how to use ROM prompt for implementing logic functions. Actually whenever we implement any logic function we normally have a sum of product type of function that means it is a and or type of functions. So instead of using a product sum of product terms this ROM prompt gives us a facility in which we can implement complex logic uh, combinational circuits using truth tables where we, and there is no need to do any minimization. When we are implementing ROM prompt for implementing of implementation of complex combinational circuits, the address line of ROM will work as input lines and the outputs will be available or will be available on data lines. Thank you. Now suppose we are having four logic functions f0, f1, f2, f3 where each logic function is a, a function of five variables a, b, c, d, e and for each of this function they are summation of min terms. For example the first function f0 it is summation of min terms 2, 3, 7, 9, 11, 15, 19. Similarly, f1, f2, f3, these are uh, these functions are also summation of min terms as given in the slide. Now, from here it is very much clear that we are having five input lines. So, five inputs. This five inputs will be connected as two address lines of the device. A, B, C, D. As you can see in this particular diagram, A, B, C, D, E are connected to the address lines of the prompt whereas four outputs f0, f1, f2, f3 are connected to the data lines of the device. So I am going to need a prompt where there are five input lines. So five input lines means 2 raised to 5, 32 address line, 32 address locations and four data lines. So the prompt which is needed is 2 raised to 5 equal to 32 by 4 prompt. From this we can have a generalized equation that when you are having when you want to implement a function with n inputs and m outputs then the prom or rom which we need it will have a size 2 raised to n into m. Now let's take an example in which we are going to implement a combinational circuit using prom. As you can see there are three functions f0, f1, f2 which are functions of three variables and for each of these functions some summation of min terms is given. So from this one information is clear that you are going to need three inputs so three address lines, three outputs that means three data lines and that's why we are going to need a prom in which there will be three address lines so two raised to three in all eight locations and three output lines that means 8 by 3. We have seen that ROM or PROM which we are going to use it is going to need three address lines, three output lines that is three data lines and size of PROM which we had finalized was 8 by 3. So eight memory locations are going to be there. So address lines they will vary from 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 for every address uh, for every address there will be some information which is to be stored. Now you can see like when I want a mean term which is 0, 0, 0 that is M0 mean term which we normally call. So that time F0 should be equal to 0. Whereas when the mean term is M1 that means values of A, B, C are 0, 0, 1 that time F0 should be equal to 1. When it is M2 min term, F0 should be equal to 1. When it is for M3, M4, M5, 
output f0 should be equal to 0 whereas for m6 and m7 uh, f0 should be equal to 111. One, one. So what we are going to do in the least significant lines, in the least significant data bit, we are going to store this information which is 0, 011. One, zero, 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 one, one. On the same lines, you will be storing the information. That means output should be equal to 1 when a particular min term is present in a function. That's, what, that's the rule you have to follow. And when there is no min term present, data line bit should be made equal to 0. So the values of A, B, C. So suppose if A, B, C is equal to 0, 1, 1. 0, 1, 1 means min term M3. That time F2 should be equal to 1 because if you go to the previous slide and see that F2 is a function of um, min term M3. Whereas M3 is missing in F0 and F1. So that's why in that memory location, when the address bits are 0, 1, 1, you will store information as 1, 0, 0. That's it. Let's go to the second example. Here we are going to implement a combinational circuit where output is square of input and input is going to be a 3-bit binary number. Once again, we'll create a uh, truth table for it. If input is 0, we know output is 0. If input is 1, output is 1. 2, 2 square is 4. 3 square is 9, 4 square 16, 5 square 25, 6 square 36 and 7 square 49. So for to represent these decimal numbers in binary, we are going to need 6 output lines. S0, S1, S2, S3, S4, S5 and these decimal numbers are transferred to binary numbers. On this slide, once again I am repeating the truth table. Now we are going to carry out some reductions by observation. Now, if you look at A0 input and S0 output, they are always same because we know uh, square of even number is even number, square of odd number is odd number. So, least significant bit remains same. Once again, if you look at the outputs, S1 you will find that it is always equal to 0. So there is a need to store only uh, values which are S2 to S5, S2, S3, S4 and S5. Now we have to implement this circuit using a ROM or PROM. You can see there are three input lines A0, A1, A2. Accordingly, we will be needing a ROM in which there are three address inputs. So, three address inputs will give in all eight memory locations to us. For this particular circuit, we are going to need six output lines, S0 to S5. But we have seen through ob observation that S0 is same as A0 and S1 is always 0. So, instead of using a ROM with six data lines will be using a ROM with only four data lines and whatever the information which is there for S2, S3, S4, S5 in that truth table that information will be storing in a ROM along with that of course we will be connecting S0 to A0, S1 to ground giving us a circuit in which output is square of three bit input number. The same circuit if we had tried implementing as a combination circuit using some gates you would have seen that first of all we would have, we would have prepared a truth table then there was a need to minimize that particular truth table after minimization we, have, we would have used some AND gates or NAND NAND gates or AND AND or combination to implement the circuit but by using a ROM we are going to use a IC in which hardly there were there there will be some around 12 pins because this 3 plus 4 7 
VCC ground chip select some pins are available in ROM this way accordingly we would have need some 12 pins IC and that 12 pin IC is sufficient to implement the circuit so whenever you want to implement any combinational circuits we can implement them using PROM and PROMs are the one which are programmable read only memories we are able to program them at the field at the manufacturing location programming is not required so using this type of circuits you can implement a bcd to xs3 code converter bcd to seven segment code converter we have a ready-made ic for it of course or binary to gray gray to binary any code converter type of circuits we are able to implement using from so in this lecture we are finished with the uh, implementation of combinational circuits using from rom in the second part of this particular unit we will be seeing the block diagram of pal pla and the, what is the difference between rom pal pla will be seen into it thank you very much